welcome to part two. As you can see, I just do this every 10 minutes. Stop the camera and stop, do part two of this. Okay, so you guys want to line up right here. Um, now, I don't know that we'll see Munchie right away. Sometimes when I'm talking, she'll come up. She's a little female cougar. Sometimes she's laying down here. We might see her in a minute. I don't know, but we'll probably see her at some point. Now, um, I do want to point out that in every enclosure, there are two parts to every single cage. And, oh, there you are. <laughs> you guys hear her purring? Mm-hmm. Never thought large cats could purr. Um, well, she's in a small cat grouping, even though she is big. She's in the small cat group, and she's the biggest of the small cats, and she can purr. So Munchie just walked up. Now, she walked through a little doorway in to drink her water. Um, if I was going to go in and clean her, and cl we'll clean the cage and Whoa. feed her, what I would do, oh, and there's one of our lions talking for you guys. They do that all day long. Yeah, you hear that? Uh, there's audio on there? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you hear that? There's a lion worm right now. It's pretty so, intense. So, um, what I would do to clean and feed is I'd walk into the entryway right here. Um, it's a door around the other side. I can point it out if you guys really want to see it. But there's a doorway on the other side, um, and it is locked. I have keys to get in there. Um, and then she has a locked door to her big part and a locked door to her small part. Um, those are both human size, so we can go in and out. Um, hey, you. Now, um, her gate is on a um, basically a pulley system, and it's... Uh, rigged up to stay up all day long except for when we do the feeding and cleaning. We can actually unattach it, drop that slide gate down, and then go out into the big part and do all the cleaning. Uh, we can pick up the poop, we pick up any bones left over from the day before, any animals that made it in but not quite out. So we find rats and squirrels and possums and things like that a lot unfortunately. Um, and we compost all the soft stuff and all the bones. We have a big gross bonfire at the end of every day. <laughs> and we leave the food out there for her. Um, and then lock the door behind us, lift that slide gate. She'll run out and start eating, and then I can drop that slide gate again, come into the small part. I do the exact same thing as far as cleaning goes, except for now I have a water bowl I have to clean out. Um, I go out to check her house to make sure all the straw in there is nice and dry for her. And, you know, pick up any droppings in here, and then lock the door, lift that gate. She has access to both sides again. Right now we're feeding anywhere between 3,500 to 4,000 pounds of meat every single day, completely raw. Um, we get all of our food donated to us now. We, it's not completely free. We do have to pay somebody to work, to, to drive the truck, to pick the animal up, to drive it back, somebody to you know, maintain the truck as well. Um, maintenance can cost a lot of money on a vehicle of that size, you know, carrying that much weight. Careful, she might scratch you. She doesn't have any claws. Oh, look at that. Oh. What are you doing, huh? This is why we asked you guys to stay back. I'm just curious now, how come you guys don't do any breeding? Like, don't you want more cats here? Um, that's a good question. We don't do any breeding because our cats, um, most of them are mutts or they're, they're inbred. Mm -hmm. They're not very healthy in the first place and we really don't want to keep doing that, you know? Munchie, you are just so full <laughs> of energy today. Um, <laughs> well, that and we're not a zoo. Uh, we, we strictly rescue the cats. We don't want to keep putting cats in cages that we really can't afford to take care of. Um, the zoos have a lot more money and they're part of the species survival plan, um, which enables them, they've, they've got it completely funded um, by the zoo environment to take care of those animals and potentially one day put them back out into the wild. You are just so rotten. Yeah, you're such a goofy little kitty or big kitty, whatever. Yeah, now Munchie <laughs> is the dog. Um, <laughs> Uh, she came, I've never seen her do this before, um, she came to us from Pennsylvania, um, from a veterinarian who had um, done rescues over the years, so actually a good place that, he came, that she came from. Um, but he just, as, his, as he grew older, his health started to fail, he couldn't you know, take care of his cats, and so he called us and asked us to take three initially. I think she wants you to pet him, I mean her or whatever. Probably. <laughs> um, and then we went and got Munchie, um, Blackie, that black leopard down there, mm -hmm. and Raja, who was a white tiger. Raja's not on the main tour because he's very aggressive. Um, but um, we took those three, brought him back here. Blackie, it took a while for him to warm up to us with her. It probably took about two or three weeks. We didn't hear her purr within those two or three weeks that we first had her. And now she just purrs and purrs and purrs and purrs and rubs on the fence and purrs some more. Big sweetheart. Um, not to say that I'd trust her to go in there with her, but from the outside, she's not too bad. Um, we're actually uh, getting ready to go back to his facility in Pennsylvania and get 15 more. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Do you have places for them? Um, we are currently building places oh, okay. for them, yes. <laughs> we don't have a whole lot of space, but what we do have... You're such a funny cat. What kind of cat is it? That's a cougar. Or a mountain lion, you would call it. Or cats who have been on the waiting list um, to go into a bigger cage. 
Oh, oh look at that. She's following us. Maybe she likes you. Yeah, probably wants to eat okay. me. <laughs> now we're getting ready to walk down these stairs, so please be careful. And once you get to the bottom, I will ask you guys to stay in the middle and just walk all the way through. Um, Raja, if he's up, there's a tiger over here on our uh, right. If you stop, he might try to turn around and spray you. So if you see that tail go up, you're going to want to keep moving by, okay? Um, and as soon as that tail goes up, a lot of times Lauren... Getting sprayed by a tiger. Ooh, that's going to be bad. Um, and starts running towards the fence. Oh, yeah. A couple years ago when my mother and I were in a zoo in medicine, she a tape a taper tried to spray it to pee at her, but luckily it missed her. <laughs> oh man, it was so close. I'm not lying. Oh we got oh look at this, we got lions over here. Yeah. Now first we gotta go down these steps first, as you can see. Yeah, check that out. There's some lions there. Here's a male, don't know its name, and here's a female with their tongue sticking out. Yeah, as you can see. Yeah, you see her? Yeah. Okay. Uh, where are these uh, guys' names? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. So, in this enclosure here, there are three tigers. Um, Dodie, Cuddles, and Casey. Ooh, there's a tiger over there. One out at the moment. Two. Okay, so Cuddles is on top of the box there, and I believe this is her sister Jody back here. These two girls came from a facility in Pennsylvania, not the veterinarian, but from another place. Um, oh, there's another one over here. Um, was a breeding facility. Unfortunately, they were a roadside zoo. They didn't take care of their animals very well. They asked us to rescue two. We had gone there, and we ended up coming back with 18 total over the course of about a week. Um, our assistant director went on that rescue. She found cats shoved in boxes in the basement, five by five feet. Um, two or three cats per box. They should have been two to three hundred pounds a piece and they were 80 to 90 pounds a piece. So really, really skinny. Their growth had been stunted. All the tigers had cataracts on their eyes. We had to remove those once they got back here and they were on pretty poor health. Um, we got them all back here. Everybody survived. Everybody's doing really, really well now. So it's been several years, probably about 10 or so, but they're doing great. Now, um, Casey, the male tiger, wherever he might be at the moment, I don't see him out um, currently. He uh, was introduced to these two girls at a very young age. If we get cats young enough, we can introduce them, usually a year or younger. But as soon as those hormones kick in, in about a year and a half to two years, it's just past the point of introduction, um, especially with tigers. Tigers are solitary cats in the wild. They don't want to hang out with other tigers. Um, so we don't, you know, force that, you know, cohabitation. Um, Raja, who I didn't see out, who I told you likes to pee on people, um, Raja, he, uh, he came from Pennsylvania alone as an adult, so he stays alone in his enclosure. And you might think that sounds really sad, but he loves it. If we were to try to put another adult tiger in there with him, at the end of the day, there probably would only be one left. That's how vicious they can get sometimes. So that's why we don't do that. Now with the, um, the lions, you'll want to come back here because he's not very friendly anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, Ma, you want to get eaten alive? <laughs> Um, no, that's okay. You don't know. I mean, yeah, he's not very friendly anyway. If he's in his house, I usually don't bother him anyway. Well, I'm happy to be good with animals in some ways. Well, you know, we all are who work here, but even still, we don't know what these cats are going to do. They're really unpredictable, and they are I was are about to say animals. that. Ooh, there's a white tiger over there. Yeah, if you guys want to come around here, you can see Mariah a little bit better. Oh boy, this is the part we wait for. We're coming about to see a white tiger. I've never seen a white tiger up close like this, but this is going to be awesome. And here she is, over here. Yeah, just look at her. Isn't she a beautiful? Okay, so this is Mariah. If you guys get a good Oops, chance to look directly away. on um, in her eyes at her face, she is very cross-eyed. Yeah. Um, with these white tigers, unfortunately, they're very sickly. Um, She's what a beauty, though. Is, yeah, she is very, very, very pretty. And all the white tigers that we have here, she's one of seven. Um, she's the only one on the main her. tour. Yeah, they're all really, really pretty, but a lot of times they do have problems. Um, with the white tigers, they're heavily inbred. And Watch what out. Happens, oh, yeah, she's fine. Um, what happens with these cats, or, or what happened back in the 1950s, the first white tiger was captured in India. Um, this white tiger was named Mohan, and he was bred to a random orange tiger. And then oh, it was to a his sheep. daughter. Oh, oh boy. There's a line. Just walk up behind me. Unfortunately, with this inbreeding, um, they have been inbred to the point of health problems. Um, mental disabilities, physical disabilities, crossed eyes, cleft palates, hip dysplasia, um, blindness, 
you know, they just, they have a lot of problems. They're really pretty, but they go for a lot of money. And a lot of times when breeders breed for these cats and they don't come out quite right, they slaughter them right away. They don't even try to let the cat, you know, live to its full potential. Um, they blame the animal for being, you know, disformed and disfigured. So, unfortunately, that's how it is with these white tigers. Pretty so sad. So all white tigers are white tigers? Most of them, yes. Yes, most of them. And if I'm correct, tigers only come from India, not Africa, right? Um, they come from Asia, but yeah, they do come from India, the Bengal. Yeah, Asia, mm -hmm. I mean. Yep, the Bengal subspecies is um, in India, yep. Well, I have to say she's like an angel, sort of way. She is, yes, very much so. And oh boy, there's a lion just came over here. Yep, so this big guy over here, this is King. Your Majesty. <laughs> now I will warn you guys, he's not too fond of camera, so if you guys have anything you're holding up, um, he might get a little grumpy, but he's like that sometimes. So, okay. well, hi. Oh. Hi. How are you, huh? He has his moments of being sweet, and sometimes he just doesn't want to do anything. So this is King, um, and King came to us from Minnesota. He was somebody's pet privately that they kept in their backyard. He was about a year old when he came, and he just had a teeny tiny little mohawk. His full mane hadn't grown in yet. Um, he was completely declawed, front and back feet. Ouch. And what they do when they declaw cats is they break the tips of their toes at that knuckle, that very first knuckle, like on our fingers and toes. They break it and then they cut it off. And cats are called digigrade animals. They walk on their tiptoes and as soon as you lop that off, they're forced to accommodate and walk flat-footed. So they'll develop arthritis, uh, joint problems um, in general. Um, their legs might bow out, you know, they might become disformed and disfigured. A lot of problems happens when you declaw a cat. A lot of pain too. We have him on a heavy dose of pain medication every single day. Um, because he walks so gingerly on his paws, it hurts him. Um, our veterinarian has immobilized him to look at his paws and he's just got these big deep grooves in the pads of his paws. There's nothing that he can do for him. Um, How long ago did he have them declawed? Um, We've had him for about 11, almost 12 years. So he's been declawed that long. Um, oh. I don't know how so young. Do you I don't know how um, young he was when they had him declawed, but. He still has residual chronic pain there. Yes. Yeah. All the cats that have been declawed yeah. have, or they do. Yeah, they do. You've have been kittens? Like house like cats? house cats yes. when they do that too? Yes, that's very possible. Now, the house cats, um, I mean, they're not as heavy on their paws, but it's still, you know, the distribution of weight is still a big problem for them, and they can, um, they can, you know, suffer from that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, I mean, imagine the tips of your fingers gone and the tips of your toes. It'll be pretty hard to walk. <laughs> uh, hold on, I need to stop. So, 